Geliy gönül gel gel ahval söyle söyle Geliy gönül gel gel ahval söyle söyle Ol Kerbela meydanında her hal söyle Ol Kerbela meydanında her hal söyle Boynunda koyma koyma ve balı söyle söyle Boynunda koyma, koyma ve balı söyle, söyle. Kana bu yanmış, bu yanmış Nazlı Hüseyin'im. Gül yüzleri al, olmuş Hüseyin. Kana bu yanmış, bu yanmış Nazlı Hüseyin Gül ruhları al al olmuş Hüseyin Yağmaya gitti, ha gitti Sultanın kanı Yağmaya gitti, ha gitti Sultanın kanı Allah'a teslim eyledi Ol şirin canı Allah'a teslim eyledi ol şirin canı Fatıma ağlar ağlar Hüseyin'im hanı Fatıma ağlar ağlar Hüseyin'im hanı Kana bu yanmış, bu yanmış Nazlı Hüseyin Gül ruhları solmuş Ol Nazeni'nin Kana bu yanmış, bu yanmış Nazlı Hüseyin Gül ruhları solmuş ol Nazeni'ni. Those were the sounds of the Şanlıurfa State Turkish Music Choir and two of its members, Bakir Karadalı and Marjan Özkan, playing Gel El Gönül Gel Ahvali Söyle. Oh my heart, come tell me how I am. They are like us, here to take part in Konya's Mystic Music Festival. This city has hosted numerous civilizations, including Romans, Sassanites, Persians and Byzantines. Each left a lasting cultural imprint on Konya, including a rich musical heritage, which can be heard reverberating from various venues across the city. On today's edition of Showcase, we're going to meet a few of the makers of those spiritually infused sounds, as well as some of the pilgrims who flock here to bask in their essence.
Jumana Awadeh and Sarah Kelm are among the tens of thousands of admirers of the Sufi poet who have come to Konya not only to take in the festival's musical performances, but to also explore the land the mystical Mesnavi once called his home and where he's buried. Thank you so much for being with us today. Now, Jumana, from what I understand, it's your third time uh, attending the Mystic That's Music right. Festival yeah. and coming to Konya. Why do you keep on coming back? You see, Afnan, I think Konya is the place for me to be, especially at this time of the year. The first time I came to Konya three years ago, it was by coincidence. I had planned a trip to visit Maulana, but then I found out about the uh, festival. It was the last day, actually. So I told myself next year it has to be right from the beginning. So it was last year and this year and inshallah also next year. Hopefully. Um, yeah. Now, Sarah, tell me about your most uh, compelling experience that you've had during your time in Konya. Um, I went uh, to meditate um, at this Mevlana place uh, in the museum. There is a mosque and I just went and sit and go on meditating. And I start crying. I was not expecting for anything but um, deep tears and I just find like I was a little girl and it was the time my grandfather died and I was just saying why did, did you go without saying goodbye to me and uh, suddenly it just changed and I was feeling like I was roomy and I saw Shams going and it was doing like oh why did you left without saying me goodbye and there was these voices uh, like God voice coming inside me and said you don't need anybody you can be on your own and try to find by yourself the way to oneness and it's so strange because um, uh, before I came to Konya I was really asking myself um, about uh, this balance um, do we need to be two people to, to go back to oneness or can we find oneness by ourselves on our own and I just get the answer by this way wow. and it was really really strong for me and when I opened my eyes I had all these women who were praying they were around me and taking care of me because they saw me crying so, it so much. So was ultimately um, an experience of healing for you? Yeah really, really. Now um, Juman I want to cross back over to you sure. tell me one of your favorite quotes from Rumi. I have two quotes uh, from Maulana. The first one is uh, when he says, come, come again, whatever you are, come. Maulana, as uh, a writer, a French writer, had a book of him, The Smiling Face of Islam. I would like to call him the real I mean, face of Islam. Because Maulana is, uh, he practices humanity. And this is what really God wants us to do. The second uh, quote is when he says that after my death, my grave won't be in the ground. It will be in the heart of the people who love me. And this is it. We carry Maulana in our hearts, right? And as we carry God in our hearts. Now in Sufism and Islam, me as a Muslim and as a religious Muslim, I would like to call myself. Mm -hmm. Sufism is not what people think. It's not like the whirling dervish or it's not it's the... It's a feeling. It's uh, Ihsan. In Islam, Ihsan is like when you worship God as if you see God. Mm -hmm. If you don't see God, God sees you. Exactly. You have to see God in everything you do, in exactly. your feelings. You have to carry God within your heart. Mm -hmm. And this is exactly what Mavlana has lived his life to do. So exactly. whether you're a Muslim, whether you're Christian, Jewish, even if you don't have religion, because the fundamentals of humanity. Because Ihsan is when you do the good things without waiting for a reward. Yes. Right. Well, that's a great note so, to end yes. this interview on. Thank you to the both of you for coming to our show today. Thank you for having us. And joining Ihsan. us on Showcase. Thank you very much. Mevlana Jalaluddin Rumi not only penned poems, he also wrote music and played an instrument called the Rabab, which he described as the doorway to spiritual enlightenment. The simple bowed string instrument is also played by Ali Shems Aksu, who is here with us today to give us a taste of its timeless sound.
Often encompassing mind, body, and soul, Rumi's teachings are all about love, compassion, and living harmoniously in a world where human relations are often full of strife. The city of Konya and the Sufi poet are intertwined in a kind of mystical dance that sees an array of global citizens come here each year to experience that sense of mysticism together. Showcases Shiraz Ali went in search of their stories. Established in 1996, the International Mevlana Foundation based in Konya has been preserving and protecting the Mevlevi order. Run by Rumi's granddaughter, it offers followers a direct connection to her ancestor. With Rumi's words reaching all corners of the globe, it's no surprise that people from around the world want to come to Konya. His work has been inspirational and encouraged change in many. For those who want to continue his teachings, they come together here to continue their learning. September the 30th, for instance, is Mevlana's birthday and we organize an event to celebrate this. And our guests are visiting here now and they are spreading the word all over the world. Most of them already know the day of his death, which he called his wedding day. Those words Bayrou just mentioned have united people regardless of race, age, gender or religion, and their impact can be profound. Ibrahim was instantly taken in by the Mevlevi order and later converted to Islam. A Mevlevi Sheikh from Konya came to Los Angeles. That's when I became a Mevlevi and started whirling and reading Masnavi. And the next year, uh, my wife and I came to Konya for the first time in 1977. We felt tremendous barakat of love at, at uh, Mevlana Rumi's tomb. And I've been a Mevlevi and coming back ever since then. 
for Rosande fell in love with Rumi's work from a young age and still gets butterflies each time she embarks on a journey to Konya. Even when I'm on the plane to Konya, I'm full of ecstasy. I'm in a state of euphoria. It's been 43 years that I feel the same way each time. I'm not an exception, as every visitor feels the same, especially Iranians. There are over 2,000 of them here. Last year, James Gaysar's son Bijan was shot and killed by a U.S. Park police officer. Bijan was an admirer of Rumi and always dreamt of coming to Konya. And since arriving here from Washington, D.C., James says he feels a spiritual connection with a place he's never even been before. In my experience of last 48 hours that I've been here, and the random messages that I have received, the attention that I got, and the connection I think I got with Rumi, but somehow I feel I was guided by him to be here and experience what I'm experiencing. I didn't believe that. I truly believe now. There are ways that he communicates um, that I, mean, I can witness for myself. You only have to be here in Konya to easily see the effects Rumi's teachings have on people. How his words transcend race, religion, and geographic borders, and how his teachings of tolerance, patience, and kindness are what brings people here each year and unites them even after they return home. Shiraz Ali, TRT World, Konya. And with that, we wrap up our time here at Konya's Mystic Music Festival. You can head to our YouTube channel for more from the world of the arts and culture. But before we leave, let's hear once again from Bakir Karadalı and Marjan Özkan from the Şanlı Urfa State Turkish Music Choir. This time he will play for us Ya Bülbül Güle Kon Dikene Konma. O Nightingale, do not land on a thorn, but land on a rose. I'm Efnan Han. And on behalf of the showcase team here in Konya, thanks for watching. Bye for now. Ya ye 
geçer bu kubluğun eyyamı geçer Harvar pençe kanadır bülbül Aa bülbül şeyda bülbül şeyda Oh uh-huh.